And this is where Britain's top commentators speak out on controversial issues without the fear of the cancel culture sweeping the rest of the media. Now, four Afghan boys who arrived unaccompanied by boat last year have been arrested for the alleged rape of a British schoolgirl last Monday. The migrants, aged between 13 and 16 and currently out on bail while investigations continue, reportedly held down the 15-year-old girl from a school they all attended in Dover before one of them raped her. But while this shocking news should be making headlines everywhere we hear... What's that? Deafening silence from the MSM and the left, despite the serious questions raised over the safety of women and children by this influx of largely young male migrants. Well, Fleet Street legend Calvin McKenzie joins me now. And Calvin, look, we, we saw, didn't we, over the weekend, uh, some of this anger come to the streets, although I'm going to point out what I pointed out earlier in the show. We don't actually know that the violence was from uh, so-called far-right protesters because there is a strong and growing belief that Antifa may have actually infiltrated the protests with their own people. And we know uh, what they try and do. They, they try and cause violence to do down a cause that they don't agree with. But regardless of what's happened there, Calvin, there is anger. There is growing anger because these crimes are being committed against British women and girls. Right, so there's two significant issues for me, or perhaps three altogether. Number one is that 20% of all the um, migrants coming across the channel, and by the way, this expression, small boats, I don't know what this is supposed to make us feel. <laughs> a ridiculous expression. So 20%, so there's 8,000 are unaccompanied, chil uh, unaccompanied children. What on earth are we going to do with those 8,000? The idea that we are going to send them back, A, where, ha, who's going to take them? Those 8,000 are here. They are not going anywhere. So, that, so that's a significant issue. The other issue, I think, which is the one that you alluded to there, was uh, we have a media in this country, and that media is cowed by the advertising community mm -hmm who say, we want our stories to go in a safe space. And they view, unbelievably, they view that kind of story about a migrant as being something that they don't want their Dove ads or some, some Vauxhall car ads to be next to. Why? I haven't got the vaguest idea. But so what does that mean? It means that major media companies in our country then do not cover mm. the, the, the story in the way that social media covers it, where, you know, even a small, you know, i got like 50,000 followers, even a small thing, I can get 10, 15, 20,000 people come onto it, right? So what is happening? Those things which people are interested in are not being covered for commercial reasons. And then finally, then you have the attack itself. We have to be very careful about all this because there's some suggestion, as you get with a lot of sexual assaults, that the victim doesn't want to become the story. Mm. I mean, she's a 15-year-old girl. But my point about this is the other way around. Would mainstream media have covered this story had it been four white boys, 13, two of 15, one of 16, r attacking, sexually assaulting, a 15-year-old Afghan girl. How big would that story have been? So this is a, a, a serious issue which, uh, look, as far as I can tell, editors and owners, owners are the real complicit ones in all this because their revenues are being affected by these advertising strikes against their, against their natural... And so there's only one thing that's going to happen in the end. In the end, there will be no, quotes, free media. It will only be a subscription-based business, the media, and it'll be better for it. And that will take less than a decade, in my view. But in the meantime, though, Kelvin, this, I would call it a conspiracy of silence, and you have pointed out some of the reasons why there's that conspiracy, obviously not here on TV News, but in the vast bulk of the rest of the media. And we have to point out there are some... Hold on a second. GB brain. News is affected by it, isn't it? Let's be honest about it. If we're going to have a candid conversation, GB News... Oh, we're affected by the advertising. Yeah. Problem, but what I mean is that we're not affected by not covering you're, the story. You're not Obviously, affected by it. We have put this story at the top of the agenda yeah. and we have since the launch of GB News. Yeah. And arguably, if we hadn't covered uh, the small boats invasion, mm. uh, it would not be anywhere 
on the no, physical it, it wouldn't or media be. It wouldn't be. I mean, if you, if, you, if you don't want to know about any of these things that are actually going on, yeah. just simply watch Sky News, or more importantly, go on the BBC. Of course. Friends, I, go, I, I listen to the BBC, uh, BBC Today programme, Radio 4, big, powerful media, 7 o'clock and 8 o'clock, there's not, not, not a single word on it. Of course. And so that conspiracy of silence, though, what I'm trying to get to is that that's why in some communities, which have been totally ripped apart by the migrants who are taking over parts of their high street or their towns or their local hotels affecting business and tourism, the anger is building because and they don't feel like they're being heard. Well, they're, they're not being heard. Rishi talks a good game. He talks a good game, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. Braverman says, I'm going to do this and do that. Patel before that said, so I'm going to do this and do that. Actually, none of them have done anything because actually they'd have to literally, and I'm going to use another expression which is never used anymore, bite the bullet. Well, I see it's going to be banned uh, by some American nut, nut bar. Um, they're going to have to do yeah, something exactly. which is going to cause a problem. Exactly, exactly. But can we just say these folk who were protesting in Liverpool over the weekend, they are the opposite of far right. Mm. You know, yeah, they're all the, the, Well, there's everybody these, points. These everybody... are Labour supporting areas. Labour supporting? You couldn't find a Tory if you fired a cannon and, it, and, and, the, and, and, the, and the cannonball went 30 yeah. miles all around exactly. there. You wouldn't find exactly. anything. So it's so a media it, 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 strategy to brand them far right, isn't it? That's what's going on here. If you, if you brand these protesters where there was a bit of violence yeah. far right, you can delegitimise the entire reason that they're protesting in the first place. Yes, so it'd be quite interesting if it, what happens if it blows up somewhere else. Uh, and it, I think it will. It, 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 yes, I, I think that there is an uncomfortable area. And what are we going to do about it? More have arrived now, mm -hmm. in, uh, up to right now, where I'll be, February the yeah, 13th, yeah, yeah. February the 14th. Thanks for the card. And uh, <laughs> it, it, You'll right, that tomorrow at the post. <laughs> <laughs> February the 14th, right, then, like, then even yeah. arrived last year. And last year was a record. Uh, what are we going to do well, about that? Border Force saying there's going to be 80,000. By the yeah, end of the year. I, yeah, I, th I, think, I think that I think the, the me anyway, look, you're quite right. Sixty five thousand was the middle was the middle range on this. So what is everybody going to do? I mean, are, are we just going to say, I tell you what, leave this to Labour. Imagine what that's going to be like. Talk about 80,000, it'll be 800,000. <laughs>